in five, four, three, two. Hello. Welcome to the Go There Do That podcast. My name is Ethan, and today I'm here with my wife, Heather, of course. But also, we have a very special guest with us, and his name is Tell Barry. And Tell is the founder of Abbey Spoke Design, and he also has a full-time job, just like somebody else you know, doing doing a side hustle. But uh, his wife, Stephanie, and him have been working really hard on this, and I'm excited to talk to them about all the things they do. And they make rings, t-shirts, and all sorts of other cool sentimental gifts. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first question. Um, what is your inspiration behind Abbey Spoke Design? And brief synopsis of what you do uh, with this company. So Abbey Spoke Designs kind of came out of a long string of interests that I had in uh, CNC milling and stuff like that, computer numerical controlled milling and stuff. And I toyed around with that years ago before it became really commercialized. And I made a like a, a 3D printer that could also carve wood reliefs and stuff like that. And that was about the same time that Cricut was coming out with their stuff to cut vinyl and whatnot. And so I got my wife one of those because I thought it was cool. And she ended up cutting vinyl and making some t-shirts and we got a press. And it kind of grew into something that we were making enough sales that we needed to be able to, to do that legally and charge sales tax and whatnot. And so it was a kind of a natural progression that we needed to have some some business to, to go do vendor fairs and stuff like that. But I also have a lot of interest in woodworking and stuff like that. And I do a lot of work on lathe. I've been making pens for years for people. Um, and so we incorporated some of that as well. Um, I started making rings and the idea behind having the ability to create really customized gifts for people, stuff that, that really meant something to someone and the ability to, to get a problem put in front of you like, hey, I really like, um, let's say guns or something like that, I'm a hunter, right? And that, well, we can make a pin that looks like a little bolt action gun or with the bullet end on it. Um, and that's something that really means something to someone, right? Is that you've customized it specifically for them. And so our, our, our kind of inspiration was uh, we like community and, and giving and, and stuff like that, but really making something for somebody that means something, because I think that we're, you know, in this consumer age, everything is just kind of pat, mm -hmm. whatever. And so, um, to do that and to be able to give somebody something that really means something to them is, I think, a cool, a cool business model. Uh, well, a very good example is uh, you actually made a ring for me. Uh, it's a fire opal all the way around in the shape of mountains, and inscribed on the inside is "Go there, do that," which is one of the coolest gifts I've ever received. And that was without even a, a you know, a prompt or anything. But you. We just, you know, know each other so well. Um, you are also my uncle, if people don't know that. Uh, but yeah, you know I like mountains, mm -hmm. and I've never thought of myself as a two-ring guy, <laughs> but now I am. As he calls himself that all the time now. <laughs> I'm a two-ring guy. I'm a two-ring guy, <laughs> and that's a special thing mm -hmm. to make that for somebody. But uh, also the T-shirt that you are wearing uh mm -hmm. that is also something special yes so this is my dog winston and an astronaut get up whatever um it's it's something that so that came from my love of ai right the kind of that new emerging technology to yes. kind of just see and i'm not any kind of guru on that right like i i'm not anything special you type some prompts in and you spend a lot of time trying to perfect that and then spending time in photoshop right getting it exactly how you want um but it's, it, it kind of comes that question, right? What is fashion? And so I think about these big problems. I work in a job that's related to psychology. And so thinking about those things is probably takes up most of my time. And so what is it to project an image or uh, to be able to communicate something through pictures, right? Mm -hmm. um, I work with people, people that don't uh, use words to speak sometimes, right? And so how do you create a symbol for them to communicate what they need, right? And that we have identity and how do you project that to other people, right? What are the things that are important to you that on first glance people say, oh, I get it, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
And so I think I'm a pretty fun guy. I'm a little bit quirky. I like weird things. And so that's something, and I like my dog a lot, right? And so that's something that it's a conversation starter, but it also shows something about me, right? Mm -hmm. That people can see and immediately say, oh, that's cool. Yeah. They can look at your ring and say, oh, hey, that's a cool ring, right? Yeah. If it is. I show and it to people I, even yeah. if they don't ask. I think it's wonderful, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is me, right? This, yeah. this represents me and I have mm -hmm. a business and look, right? It's good right. to do that. And so you can take it off and, and do that kind of stuff. So whenever you're, you're really trying to make a gift for somebody, what defines them, right? And it could be this defines you to me, or I know you well, and this is really important to you, and let's go show the world that, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of the idea behind the company is such a high level of customization there. Yeah, and let's another good example is actually a T-shirt that y'all had made for Heather, yeah. mm -hmm. which uh, also unprompted, but also perfect for the person, right? Heather, why is this sh that shirt perfect for you? Well, I am well known for being very smiley. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Just kidding. So it's an ironic, um, ironic message? <laughs> I think it's mostly just like cute and happy. And like that is how I like, I know I'm like quiet and I keep to myself, but like that's kind of the things that I'm like drawn to. Just like mm -hmm. cute, happy. And so that is a AI generated one? I think that one's just a standard stock. So yeah. those things, so if if someone comes up and says, hey, you know, I really want a shirt that's like this, right? Like a graphic design tee or I want that. We can do whatever that is, right? But we can do sublimation or we can do, there's different types of, mm -hmm. of medium, right? That you, you can attach that have different properties. And so if you want something vintage, we can print that out mm -hmm. and, and do that. Or, yeah. Okay. So whatever it is, right? And but if if it suits somebody's style, right, that's what they're gonna get. You said you do a couple it's trade shows, you go to a, a mm -hmm. couple of those. So like for the people that what do you have there, I guess, in stock? What sort of mm -hmm. images or t shirts or right. And ring? so those are gonna be there are seasonal ones that come out. Right. And, and some of them are licensed. And so you just get the license and you're like, OK, these are the business. Right. It, you move product yeah. at, at the big shows. And so that's normally what we do. I have some rings that are made um, that are just kind of standard ones. It's really difficult to have somebody come up and say, you know, oh, I want this very specific ring. Most people don't know what they want. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a and that's a problem. And you think, oh, I know exactly what I want. Right. Then think of a really cool thing that you want on a t-shirt and whenever you're trying to generate the image you're like oh i don't know i don't know i don't know what's cool mm -hmm. and you start finding that right it's just part of humanity that whenever you get too many options that you're dissatisfied because you think that you picked the wrong one yeah. right mm -hmm. and so at trade shows and things what you do is you just say here are your options do you like any of those things a lot yeah. of other people do and so there's that business model where you just have to run product but on the back end, to have the ability that if somebody says, hey, you know, my grandma passed away. I'm looking for something to remember her by. Um, you know, do you have an old old piece of her garment or something like that? We can make my card out of that and put it into a ring um, yeah. that, you know, it was her fate or it was a quilt she made and it's threadbare. And we don't want to get rid of it. It has sentimental value, but you can keep that with you for, you know. So that's so interesting that you can like make a ring out of something like that. Literally like, anything. I, yeah. That is crazy. Pretty much. Now there are some things. So if you want to use like really fine metals, right? So yeah. it's not fine jewelry, right? Um, so that's possible, but I'm not sure I have all the machines to do that. Right. Cause they have mm -hmm. like laser welders and cool stuff. So the potential is there. It's just that I'm not going to go spend $8,000. Yeah to make a ring right yeah well you have you have enough to make beautiful rings already yes um, and so it's yeah. it's that discussion right is that this is our capacity and i think we have a pretty nice price point for our kind of stuff right mm -hmm. um for how how long it takes and so that's that's one of those things that if you want a really fine thing that's cool but i might have to work up to to doing yeah to having that. the manufacturing yeah. ability for that right yeah. because i literally go to my garage and yeah <laughs> yeah pull out the tools that i need for it uh -huh. um and so you know there's that but it's in that com conversation again if somebody has a very specific thing i can tell really fast whether or not i'll be able to manufacture that specific thing for them mm -hmm. and 
if it's not something so, so specific, but it's just an idea, then that's the conversation that you have, right? What, what means something to you or for your loved one? What do they really enjoy? Yeah. And then we can do that. Right. Um, I had a person come by and they said, you know, my wife, I'm looking for a ring for her. She really likes peacocks. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, how? Okay. You really like peacocks. So you have a color theme. Right. right that you can follow through. <clears throat> and you can get some really shiny resin that has like pine cones impregnated with mm -hmm. this resin. And so all of a sudden you have a little bit of the browns. Right. You see peahens the lady peacocks right yeah. and they're almost entirely brown and then you have the very vibrant male colors the blues the mm -hmm. greens the teals and so you have all that model together and you can put it on a, a blue ceramic ring core and so it turns out to be a very peacock themed ring yeah um from that and so if you just give a little bit of a prompt right it's mm -hmm. the same thing with ai that's what i was about to say yeah how yeah. what's my interpretation of that mm -hmm. yeah right so, and or what's the interpretation of the person so you say okay well i think we can do this so for the t-shirts you rely on the computer mm -hmm. to do the generating mm -hmm. but for the rings that has to be handcrafted right mm -hmm. in your brain you digest that and give it back to them which perfect examples uh to what my ring mm -hmm. the opals and then heather's t-shirt it's all you needed was prompts because you've already have prior knowledge of mm -hmm. who we are but if somebody were to approach you and just like just what would you say just give me a brief description of the thing mm -hmm. that you're wanting what's most the, important to you yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. how do you define yourself yeah. yeah right if you want to project that that's totally what easy questions to answer you oh, know right <laughs> but you know and there's always that that back end thing i don't i try to be very consistent in my life but there are things that are very important to me right which is defining who we are, mm -hmm. you know, who am I as an individual? And I think whenever you get really into the theory of fashion, it's that, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of trends push the boundaries and make people uncomfortable? You see these really weird outfits that come out. Yeah. Why? It's right. That's how yeah, people express that themselves. Because, right. Because it's an expression mm -hmm. or it's a theme that comes out. And so whenever you get to that level of thinking about fashion or about what you're projecting. Um, yeah. Who wears a fishing shirt and a big hat? On a podcast, yeah. or, right? What does that mean? Like you're basically you wear like a Halloween, costume. right? What what yeah. image are you trying to project there? And yeah. so can we can we define that down and distill that down into something that into a little ring, a little you know, yeah. mm -hmm. the mo the mo the the smallest single symbol that we can, right? How much can we pack into that thing to define you? And uh, you know, the conversation starts or however you feel comfortable. That's what it's for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's exciting because like. So say uh, somebody doesn't know exactly what they want, but they want a cool ring. Mm -hmm. What would you do with that? I would probably give them some, some of the standard, like, lower cost materials that we have. So we have, like, true stone, which is a compressed stone, right, powder with resin. And so we can take that and we can turn that onto a, a simple metal core. And it's really pretty. Some of Stephanie's most favorite rings are made out of true stone. Um, and so it's just, and it's a very unique, you don't see it um, hardly at all in mm -hmm. jewelry, right? Um, and so we can take that, we can mill it down and we can make that. And it's just something that looks pretty, right? Maybe yeah. these are my favorite colors. And so this, or, you know, it's a unique color. So it accessorizes better with something in particular. I'm going to wear it to this event. It's really important to me. So that's probably where I'd start out. Or I'd say maybe it's the type of material, right? Um, do you want something, you know, what are you looking for? Is it to show off? Or is it to keep a memory to remind you of something? Mm -hmm. So if it's, you know, my grandpa died and whatever, well, what did he do? Well, he was a farmer, okay, or a rancher, you know. Um, is So that's how you remember him. Do you have any, like, wood from an old fence that he had or an old mm -hmm. barn, right? We can take that, we can stabilize it, and we can turn that into a ring, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something that you can keep near and dear and close to you and wear at all times. This that's old so memorabilia. Cool. Yeah. Um, you could just take it. And you have made rings out of uh, types of cloth, Yes. As well. So I had an old jacket and uh, we don't have a whole lot of videos. I'm not good with 
videos. But I did put one together and it shows the entire process of laying it into my carta. And I put um, some glow powder in it because why not? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's this, this my carta or canvas impregnated resin that glows in the dark whenever uh, you turn off lights. It's a pretty neat idea. Mm -hmm. Another really cool idea. We did the ring with the opals all the way around it in the shape of mountains isn't the only ring that you had sent us. It was also, there's also a ring that changes color mm -hmm. when we go outside. Yes. Yeah. What is that? So it's a, it's a photochromic powder that okay. goes in. And so that just means that the, the, it'll change. And that's whenever you get into material science, like I'm, you have to buy that stuff. I can't just say, oh, magically I want this color, but mm -hmm. there's quite a few different colors. And so some of them shift from, like an off white to pink, purple, blue, right? Um, and then some of them go from like yellow to, to green. And so there's a few combinations. Those are a little bit more limited. Um, but you just put that in there and, and it will change. So I, uh, you know, you can do like deer antler. I've done those before. Um, and then put thermochromic powder in there to where it looks white. Mm -hmm. um, and just lightly spalted with opal whenever you're inside, but you go outside and then it's like blazing blue yeah. uh, in yes. the center. That was our, yeah, cool. ours turned blue. Yeah. Um, but that's really cool because this little squiggle of mountain, this is a very subtle mm -hmm. mountain shape. It wasn't all the way around. Mm -hmm. But like, to, to me, that's really cool because it's like incentivizes you to go outside mm -hmm. and expose it to. And go there. And, and do that, do that <laughs> yeah. thing that yeah. tra turns your ring a different color. Um, <laughs> but that's super cool. Like all these things, I, I just want to emphasize how cool it is. The customization, because you're just like very intelligent with how you apply all these materials together. It all comes together into one tiny little ring. And you don't expect things to like express themselves that much. Mm -hmm. But like when you start to, when I, the more I talk about it, I'm like, this is even more amazing with how customizable it is because there are people who have an old jacket or an old mm -hmm. something from somewhere and they mm -hmm. don't know what to do with it. Right. But they want a, a reminder of that thing with them. Yeah. And th you know, we, we have, superstitious beliefs and we mm -hmm. have you know the sentimentality and all these different things and it causes us to do some silly things sometimes right because it's just a jacket right yeah that's all it is it's a jacket and we can go buy a new jacket but it's still special to you but it's not just a jacket yeah. because when i look at that jacket i have a memory that's yeah. associated with it right and i think that that's the important part is the memory Right. Mm -hmm. And so if why hang on to this old threadbare thing that's taken up space just because you're afraid you're going to lose your memory. Right. If yeah. it's a sentimentality that's there, then we can preserve yeah. part of that. So right. what would be the process behind that? If somebody wanted to have something preserved and it was just a unique item, we've mm -hmm. been saying jacket, you know, but I'm trying to think of another grandma's quilt. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. A baby blanket, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so there are so we would have to have the, the, uh, p some pieces of it sent, right? Mm -hmm. And so whenever you're layering pieces of cloth, right, to get to be eight millimeters, 10 millimeters thick whenever it's compressed, that's actually quite a bit of material. Yeah. Right. Um, and so for me, I had to cut off a pretty large section of like sleeve for mm -hmm. my jacket, but then mm -hmm. that's to go down into to one ring. So you can't do it off a couple threads. And so, you, yeah. well, so if you want, if you only well, had actually, a little scrap, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, leave it to me, right? What would happen is that you'd probably have that drawn around and then build up some some sort of resin around it yeah. to where it didn't have to be layered as much. And if it had a pattern or something, like that, you know, there's ways to work with that. But if you, just the, the, the general micarta that I made, that took quite a bit of material, right? If it's grandpa's old barn and it's rotted, um, you'd have to stabilize that. And so that's impregnated. You put it in a vacuum chamber and, and you make it basically inject the resin into the pores to where it doesn't break apart anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's different ways. With all of that, there's inherent risk that that really important thing to you yeah. explodes on the lathe. So it's never yeah. give me everything, right? Of that if, material, if it's, yeah. If it's irreplaceable, right? Yeah. Then you might as well keep that and put it in a shadow box or something like right. that. Right. Right. But if it's something that you, you know, it's like, it's unreasonable for me to keep this threadbare quilt just laying around and moths are eating it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we need to throw it out. And you think, oh, 
you know what? Let's just go ahead, send it here. You know, those are the t- things that I can, mm-hmm. I can work it's, on. It's like the forgotten items that would be remembered, yeah. sort of. Yeah. And, yeah. and you refresh it, right? What's mm-hmm. the point of keeping on to these sentimental things if they're just rotting away? Yeah. Right? Why not it's preserve sad. them in a different way and you mm-hmm. can keep them with you? Yeah. Right? And that, and also something you pointed out, you need sort of a lot of material. Before we were live, we talked about, uh, we were like, oh, we have so many Alaska rocks yeah. that we have. And they were like, not that big. Um and so you do need it, for a rock to make a ring out of yeah. a rock, like the, the, the natural lot. materials, right? And so we know that rocks have fractures in them and whatnot. And whenever you spin that thing up to three thousand RPMs, there's a chance that it's just going to fly apart because it's got some microscopic crack in it. Yeah. Um, I try to be gentle. Those things take a long time because you're basically using sandpaper. Yeah. To ream out right the the center hole for the ring. And it has to be done very precisely. So say that you throw a chip or something like that and you're almost done to where you can get it to fit on a metal core or something like that. And not all stones do you want. Mm -hmm. You know, my flint ring that I made whenever I was young just exploded on me because it didn't have any backing. And so there are some materials that you have to be more careful with, right? Yeah. Um, So I have a ring on right now and it has that whiskey barrel on the inside and it has a brushed titanium on the outside. I do a lot of work with my hands. So any stone or any kind of um, material that has resin or or any kind of adhesive on the outside, it's going to get scratched up. It's going to get pitted. Mm -hmm. I turn with steel tools so steel can scratch most things. And so then you get titanium or tungsten on the outside and it preserves what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's what's on the inside that counts. Well, for me, in because case, you don't want case. the outside <laughs> to be all gnarly and ugly, right? Yeah. Because then people are like, oh, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't look good. So depending on, you know, and, and I work with some folks that, you know, they change jewelry and they take it off before they wash their hands. They can have a much more delicate type of ring, yeah. right? Because they're not doing heavy lifting or, you know, running mm-hmm. siding so or whatever. So when we say any, you can make it out of any material. It's like you have to pay attention to the fragility or the strength of that material. So it's right. like you I have mean, to pay attention to that too. Yeah, cause... because if you say, hey, you yeah. know, I want I want a ring made out of talcum powder or balsa wood. Yeah. Cool, I can do that, but it's not going to last you very long. Yeah. yeah. Right? So yeah. knowing what you're working with as well. And you do have materials on hand that you could, you mm-hmm. already sort of create things from. Yeah, so if somebody um, wanted just anything, mm-hmm. you know, I just want a, a, a birch ring or something like that. Mm-hmm okay, cool. Like I can get that wood and we can turn it down. If uh, if you want some, just a random true stone ring. So this resin impregnated stone. Um, yeah, I have, I have that. I can cut it down and I've got a few different colors, but if you want something very specific, then that's where it takes a little bit longer for us to get that in because you can't keep everything possible to put onto a ring mm-hmm. in my little garage. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where yeah. And so that's the, that's the genius behind it though, is, um, being able to create things, but also if somebody's like pressured, too pressured into sending, you know, you don't have to have a sentimental thing. It's just, you can make cool rings yeah. mm-hmm. by itself too. Just like mm-hmm. the t-shirts, you can make a funny, cool t-shirt and they all are going to be unique though, because mm-hmm. they are AI generated. So no one could be the same, right? If they want a unique Right. Look yeah, you'll get different prompts, and yeah, you know, we have a commercial license, so that's you mm-hmm. know, we ha- we have those things, and so yeah, you're you're going to be unique whenever you you want something custom like that, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and so I think that's a, a, a really the other things that we make, right? So we could make little furniture or you know, end tables, stuff like that. Turn down bowls, wooden bowls, pins, stuff mm-hmm. like that. You can have a matching pin and ring set. So that the peacock ring, right? We also have a blank that, that turns into a pin for that, right? Yeah. And so you can you can coordinate all that kind of stuff. Um, so you can combine, right, whatever you want. Decorate your office with mm-hmm. some pins or your hands with some rings or mm-hmm. just wear a cool shirt to work. And they're work. really cool, like graduation presents or, you know, mm-hmm. anniversary uh-huh. gifts or something like that. It's not necessarily to replace anything, but... To yeah. have something unique that's special just to you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That somebody put a real thought. And that's the, you know, whenever we talk about sentimentality, um, one of the pins that I, I have from early on was made by my uncle who passed away, right? And mm-hmm. that was a graduation gift for me. It's 
you know, still in a drawer that we have at home. It's mm-hmm. a deer antler pen. Yeah. And I remember that every time, right, that we have to write with it. Is, that was Delton, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he made me that. And so if you want to be remembered for, for the gift that you give, yeah, right, make it very valuable to the person, important. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's mm-hmm. good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess AI... It's a very broad term to a lot of people. Yes. But getting into that, I want to I want to learn more about that sort of process. So to a layman's layman's terms, like prompting, what is that? Like you you say you prompt it to do something, mm-hmm. but it is I think an art form in itself to tell an AI to not make a wonky image with five arms and three legs and right. you know how is that? How do you refine that? So I'm not an AI engineer. I, I don't, I'm not a programmer. I'm not a data scientist. I'm not a computer scientist. And so what's drawn me to AI is the idea of language, right? And can a, something that has been trained on certain images, or I also like all the other chat stuff, right? Um, can, can you learn how to talk to that and make prompts with a clarity of speech. And so you can type in literally like astronaut dog and it'll give you something that mm-hmm. contains elements of astronaut and dog, right? How do you refine stuff so clearly? And that's one of the questions that's out there and they have competitions. So mm-hmm. um, whenever you prompt this this network that assimilates all these images it's been trained on, right? And you say, I want a ship in a bottle. Now, I think that we all know what a ship in a bottle looks like because these are things that people build ships inside of bottles, right? And yeah. And they get them in there. But the problem is that uh, the models that are there right now haven't necessarily been trained on that, and so they don't understand it all the time. And so a ship in a bottle, right, can be a lot of different things to it or sometimes it just finds the salient prompts of ship and bottle and you get a bottle that's shaped like a ship Mm -hmm. right and then it gets more complicated because as the as the network is able then to know okay a ship inside of a bottle right yeah but is it a vertical bottle or is it a horizontal bottle yeah is there water in the bottle Mm -hmm. right or is it just the ship and so what are these these other uh ideas that are within the right relational frame of a of a ship right because it's water sky clouds billowy sails are we talking about the titanic here is it going to be a metal one is it going to be a battleship what kind of ship mm-hmm. a little dinghy right and you start finding out that we make a lot of assumptions whenever we're communicating we take yeah. a lot of shortcuts because otherwise it takes too long and then you give too many prompts and then you have a bigger framework around that so you might get some stuff in there that you don't want or how do you make a glass ship inside of a glass bottle, right? A mm-hmm. ship made of glass inside of a glass bottle laying horizontally. And so how do you specifically get that, right? And then has the the real kicker here, I think, is has the model, the, the artificial intelligence, been trained on enough images to know what something really looks like, right? right. I can tell you, like for O'Malley, you know, his dog, Mm -hmm. there's not just a whole lot of really good training on those gray or silver labs. Yeah. Right. And so it's more difficult to produce that image. And they're coming out with other things where you can feed it an image and say, oh, look at this image. Tell me what the prompt is. And so Mm -hmm. we're learning how to talk and get what you want out of those models. Yeah. But it's difficult. And then it's never perfect, right? Um, the model I use has problem with hands, fingers, toes. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes legs are going through chairs or something like that. <laughs> and and so that's just to get the, the outline of what you want. And then you feed it into a photo editing program, right? Mm-hmm. And then that's whenever you really make it into what you, you want. So there's a bit yeah. of refinement that goes into... A, AI generated image for you with t-shirts and everything. It's like, like three hours. doesn't just pop it. Yeah. out perfect. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I would uh, accept the accusation that it's cheating, but it's not that it's, there's no work involved to right. it. Right. Um, I think we just use tools for creativity. Yeah. Right? I mean, I could make pins by forging them in a little, like furnace, right? And then beating them down and cutting the grooves and I could go get the opal. I could, 
Yeah. But that takes a whole lot of time and that would increase costs exponentially. Yeah. Right. And so then what do we do? Well, we do the assembly of the thing and we still have part of that creative process where it's like, okay, this is the idea, right? I'm going to use tools to gather the materials and then present this idea in a refined state to you. You can also knit your own t-shirts, but right. You know. <laughs> yeah. Let's get a loom going. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, that's unreasonable. Yeah. I think. And so, uh, through all of that, right, at what point in time does the value that's been put into it, and really for the end user, it's like, you know, how much did this cost or, you know, how much mm-hmm. thought went into this thing, right? And I think that for most people, when you just give a small amount of, I've thought about you long enough yeah, that I was able to finally define this. Yeah. And this is what I think of you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That is more thought than what's given to most of us most of the time. That's Absolutely. Very what has Aeropostale done to know me or Old Navy? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And we'll buy new clothes for people like cool, mm-hmm. yeah. cool shoes. And it's like, oh, well, you spent 200 bucks on these. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that 200 bucks took me 10 hours at work or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Right. And so you're worth your presence worth 10 hours at work for me. Right. Yeah. Right. That's uh, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. And so time. it's just this exchange thing. And so that's where the emotion and the sentimentality come in is that you're worth more than money to me. Mm-hmm. Right. I you're thought worth about my time. You. Right. Mm-hmm. And you're worth me going through this process of this is really meant for you. Yeah. Right? It's a very mm-hmm. special thing. And it's not it's not exactly going to be the most trendy thing because it is unique and it's not going to be the same logo that everybody has or you know like the same look mm-hmm. as people have but it is like the the whole reason why again why I wear this ring is cuz it's there's one of a kind literally mm-hmm. in the whole world just like this one it's not like I bought it up from Amazon like right. you know and just ordered it and I was like oh yeah there's you could get one of these for like 15 bucks no it's like handmade yeah mm-hmm. and that's the craziness of of Abby spoke designs, I think um, mm-hmm. it's it's taking the thoughtfulness thought. Not only that, but you're also like thinking about where things are going because AI and Chat GPT, Mid Journey AI, Starry AI, all these other ones, it's scaring people because it's like the new big new. thing. Mm-hmm. But you, like you said, it's just a new tool, mm-hmm. just like anything, and you are using that to its fullest potential. It's not destructive in any way. It's literally. Mm-hmm. creating things and that's really what it's meant for i think you know so the the technologies that we have nuclear power and stuff like that right you can destroy so much mm-hmm. with nuclear bombs right but you can also create such cheap energy right to make people's lives so much easier and so it's one of those things that can you produce something right with this tool in a way that benefits humanity and i choose to be the optimist right Mm -hmm. i mean you can run away from things scared all the time but if you can embrace them and use them correctly right then i don't see much harm in doing that it is just a tool right Mm -hmm. and what are you know what's what's important to us if if it comes down to this problem and that's been one of the problems with sales of custom things. Right. And it's that, how do you define yourself? And whenever you really push somebody or how do you define someone else? Right. And when you really push them, right. Distill it down in just a few words, a few things, a few, a a metaphor for someone or analogy. And what you get is a long silence. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't know. I know that they like this thing and I know that they like that thing. And what's fun through that process, right, is exploring then what do you think of yourself or mm-hmm. what do you, right? And mm-hmm. I think that in that process, that's probably the best gift for the person that's purchasing the thing, right? Going through that process. Let me really think about mm-hmm. my wife. Yeah. Right. Let me really think about myself. What do I want to project of myself? Mm -hmm. After I have my existential crisis, I can get a cool ring from it. Yeah, that's part (laughs) of it, right? Yeah. I think that's a good gift is to think about things, to be more because and it's kind of that rejection of the consumerist culture, right? Or at least the the brands and the labels and stuff like that. I want to be just like everybody else. Right. I want to conform to all that. Mm -hmm. But you lose yourself. Yep. And I think that we've lost some of ourselves, right? Yep. So in some ways, 
I know that gets very, that waxes extremely philosophical, but that's the joy of having a, your own side hustle. Right. right. Mm-hmm. You get you, to define it in any way you want to. Right. And I don't rely on that for my sole income. So right. it can be what it is. Yep. Um, but if you get to help and make people happy along the way, right. If you get to bring people joy and something that sustains them, mm-hmm. right. Isn't that the greatest kindness mm-hmm. that you can do? Yeah. I think so. Um, like with go there, do that. Obviously we care very much about it and we've started a whole podcast just to sort of gain more of an understanding about our experiences, like reflecting on things. But also I want to know more about the people that sort of follow the same path as, uh, you know, share the same ideals. Like I like the, right now it's the, the side hustle type of thing and for this being a side hustle i enjoy doing this very very much Mm -hmm. and it brings me joy in my life and then if somebody else looks at a photo or watches something or goes to the solo art show that we're going to have august 5th at 2 to 4 p.m at the (laughs) conservatory of north austin plug (laughs) if you do any of those things and you just crack a smile or say that's cool or you say maybe i'll try that out that's all we're trying to do with each other and that is i think what the world needs more of yeah. is like thinking about what actually makes you happy either mm-hmm. about yourself not just consuming yes to consume. mm-hmm. because yeah. what is what is the how would you measure the deficit that people get from never actually asking themselves those questions like mm-hmm. what do i want what do i want yeah what's something custom about me yeah. and everyone has that everyone has unique experiences in every single way yeah so why is that important as opposed to the conveyor belt of things as i like to call it like you do the the things that other people sort of tell you what to do one of my favorite quotes is that it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society mm mm-hmm, mm-hmm right? We lose ourselves, right? Sometimes. And if we don't think about those things, then we're, and what I've seen through the business, right? Is that we're willing to be told Mm -hmm. how we should behave, who we are, right? And if you're told long enough that you are not worth it or whatever, you start believing those, those things yourself. And so, at some point in time, you need to think about that and challenge those ideas, I think. Mm-hmm. And you don't do that unless you think about it. So in some ways, it's just an experiment as well of, for me, can I read somebody well enough, right, mm-hmm. through their through their experiences and things they say they enjoy to create something that we say, boom, that's it. Right? I see this you. Is, right. Mm-hmm. I see you. And or if somebody's buying it for somebody else that they can say, I really, this is what I think of this person, right? Yeah. And this is the value. And to, to partner up with that person, because I solve puzzles quite often, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's fun for me to say, okay, what can I make a ring out of next that's going to be durable? And sometimes I fail, but most of the time it's successful, right? And so what is that? And to partner up with somebody and say, is that, is that what we want here? Mm-hmm. And they say, yeah, that's really cool. Yes, and so you've been... Satisfying. Mm-hmm. You've been sort of talking about this whole philosophy thing and the psychology thing. Mm-hmm. What exactly are your credentials for speaking of such things? Uh, I'm a board certified behavior analyst by trade. Um, so I'm just a behavioral guy, right? Um, I've spent a good 20 something years now working in fields of developmental disabilities with pretty extreme cases uh, for most of my career that have intellectual or developmental disabilities, mental health disorders, and or substance abuse disorders, um, and specifically people that have been in trouble with the law and trying to help those folks understand and to grow Mm -hmm. um, into kinder individuals or at least more functioning. Mm -hmm. So so what is, like, not to get too deep into Uh the, the severe case type of thing, but that that process is sort of, learning that they are above their own sort of... We all behave um, for for pretty simple reasons, right? It's mm-hmm. I'm trying to get something out of my environment or I'm trying to get something to leave my environment. 
And what we see is, is you're presented with somebody, let's say, that, uh, that is very aggressive and assaultive um, for very small things, right? I lost the game, so I'm going to beat you up, mm -hmm. right? Well, what are you seeking there? right? What, what are you looking for? Are you looking just to win a game? Right. And that's the behavioral part. And so we, we, as my job, I look at this in one way, but whenever I go home is that we think about it in a different way sometimes, right? We were able to, to expound on those ideas. And so is that a problem of, I feel insecure. And so whenever I lose, it makes me feel this emotion again. Of yeah. I'm just not good enough. I can't do it right. Right. Is that it? And we can test these things over time, right? Given mm -hmm. the right circumstances. Um, and so you have a, a, a hypothesis and you go and you test it, right? And eventually what we start finding is that there are better ways to engage with other people, right? Mm -hmm. Which um, make me feel valuable, right? There are better ways that I can, that I can feel better about myself than getting so angry that people just leave me alone or that they placate me by saying, oh, 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 you win, right? Yeah. Even whenever we're working with folks that have intellectual disabilities, they know someone who's being disingenuous for the most part, mm -hmm. right? Who's just placatory to them. Yeah. And that, you know, if we go through life with everybody placating us, it makes us feel pretty empty generally, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what I try to integrate through the folks that I work with in those cases, right? Is how do you get what you want? And a lot of the times, you know, we want to feel loved and all that. Yeah. Broadly, Pretty base. Broadly speaking, yeah. right? Most of the time, probably, yeah. Yeah. And that it's not just a problem of, of within that population. I mean, these are problems that I would say are part and parcel to, to living life as oh, a yeah. human, right? I mean, we all struggle with those feelings of inadequacy and not being loved and, and all those things. And so when you are in that for so long, right? Then it's hard for that not to be part of who you are, right? Yeah. Part of my identity right? is that uh, looking for, for what is somebody wanting to get out of the situation? What makes them feel good? And sometimes it's the, it's a thing that isn't really apparent, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get angry and we say, I don't even know why I'm getting angry right now, right? I don't know what I'm mad about. Just leave me alone. Yeah. Right. How it's mm. that problem if mm -hmm. I don't know what I want. Yeah. Right? We see that all the time. Yeah. And so this is just an extension of these things I think about all the time that consume me. Mm -hmm. But you, you shouldn't be well adjusted to a for family sick society. You shouldn't um, be, I don't that, think. That's that's not good. So it is good to know more about yourself and why you do the things that you do mm -hmm. and what kind of ring you want or what kind of t-shirt you want, right? Yeah. The same thing. Intros like, introspection is a big deal, right? And that's yeah. why if you need to go to a therapist, you go to a therapist, right? And you work through that with somebody. But I don't think it ever hurts to sit down and think about yourself mm -hmm. for just a little while yeah. and say, what is it that I want? What mm -hmm. is it that I'm trying to get? What is it that I, I'm trying to project to people? But that's scary to do that. You know, I always, like people get, weird when i say who are you in a dark room alone with just your thoughts you know yeah. and most people are like oh no way <laughs> and it's okay yeah. to do that but that's like think about why maybe because those mm -hmm. are exercises that i do out in nature and all these like things that like i have to reflect and think about the things that i experience and introspect you know like introspectively mm -hmm. like inspect myself am i using these terms correctly um uh, like really think about why I'm, am I wanting to like get away? Am I wanting to create things? Am I, you know, like I constantly ask myself these questions and I like, I just have fun being out in nature and, uh, it brings me joy and mm -hmm. you don't, sometimes you don't need to think more than that because it is healthy to be outside and just connect mm -hmm. with, yeah. connect with the world. But yeah, but there are things, you know, like the side hustle, type thing like there are things that you deal with every single day and how does seeing a uh, bear or heather and i talk about this all the time like going to kenai kayaking and then we bring all that back to us with us in our everyday life and it's mm -hmm. like well that makes life like maybe the real danger is just in our head because uh or the real danger is out there like with bears and stuff mm -hmm. but you know we suffer more in our minds than we do in reality. Yeah, and you, you can't force somebody to engage in that 
sort of self-reflection, right? Mm -hmm. You can't. If they're not ready to. And it's not healthy yeah. to force somebody into that before no, they're no, ready, no. right? And that's why we have therapists and mental so health professionals. don't think about who you are in a If room. you're not ready. Yeah, yeah. 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 alone no with pressure. your thoughts. Well, and also, right, if you're not ready. working in the field, there's no stigma in going to a counselor and yeah. talking to somebody that's trained, to, right? I'm not a counselor myself. Right. I, I do a different type of therapy. Um, but there's no problem in going to that if you have those hangups. But also, you know, and to speak over into a philosophical level, right? I think we're all chasing that those questions to some degree. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning of life? What is happiness, right? Why, why am I not happy, right? Those types of things. And the answer I got from AI, which I fully agree with, uh -oh. <laughs> just a plug. Uh-oh. You're right. Uh, what is the meaning of life? To live. Uh, yep. That is the meaning, right? To go there and do that thing, mm -hmm. right? I think, and I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. The meaning of life might not be to go find ultimate happiness, mm -hmm. and it might not be to slip. It's the process of living, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the meaning of life is to live. You can't experience life any other way right. than living. And that's why I like, you know, and we take pictures of it, right? I mm -hmm. mean, we all do. And that's really cool is to go and experience, and right? To, to live and love and laugh and mm -hmm. cry and suffer and mm -hmm. all these things, right? That's all, all of a part it. of a life. Um, and then what do you take out of that that you find value in? right mm -hmm. and then do you present that to the world does that become part of who you are and is that part of something that you're proud of right those are all really big questions about persona and identity and all that kind of stuff and you can wrap it all up in a little ring box so you can put mm -hmm. it on a shirt and you can wear it somewhere or at the end of the day maybe you just lay with your thoughts in bed and you're you're happy with it right yeah you bring contentment to those things but don't do that if you're not ready again don't don't force don't let this force you into any sort of <laughs> crisis right if you're happy then be happy if you're happy and you know it clap your clap hands, your hands. <laughs> so uh yeah but that's that's like do we do we create most of the problems ourselves like when when i like the idea of the silence that comes after asking somebody like who what who are you like describe yourself you know what do you like about yourself that you would lay on a ring or something. I think some people aren't used to being asked that. That like it's not something they've thought about right. yes yet because they haven't had the space to mm -hmm. think about that or like they've never been asked that before because no one's asked them. Before. There's a really cool thing in therapy, right? Where the counselor just stays quiet, that therapeutic mm -hmm. pause and it gets really awkward and then you feel compelled to say more, right? They're mm -hmm. dragging this stuff out of you, right? Yeah. It's a neat little trick from the behavioral perspective that I like, right? Is that maybe someone doesn't have a skill to talk about themselves in a way that is right. Revealing of, of yeah. who they are, right? Maybe, maybe we haven't been given the exposure and maybe the they room. know, but yeah. they don't know how to communicate that. Right. Or I'm, I'm worried yeah. that somebody is not going to like this part of me. Right. Right. And so that's fine. If, if, if you think, because that might be very well true, yeah. right? I have a dark side that people dislike to see and yeah. I don't need to brag about that one or show it off. Right. I right. mean, we all have that part, but what are the things that actually bring me joy and sit there and mm -hmm. think about that for a second? Because so often it's, it's the value that you serve to someone else, which is okay, but that you're obligated to, and you don't really sit down and think about what makes me happy and what makes right. me me. Right. Mm -hmm. And those are really important questions to think about, I think. And that adds to the weight of the uh, sentimentality of that thing, right? Because it's, that was part of the experience. Or to yeah. sit there and think about, you know, I hope that marriage doesn't end on the, your wedding day and you never get to know your spouse better. Or you never think of them and conceptualize them as, as somebody who's capable of growth or Mm -hmm. you know, that, that has preferences that maybe you don't know, or maybe they've been lying to you, for, yeah. you know, just to placate you as part of that, that interplay. Right. These are things that I think are good. To think yeah. About. And to take somebody else's perspective, at least at a minimum. Right. Mm -hmm. So that to add to that, there are things that you can have, like as mm -hmm. far as priorities go, you can have time dependent priorities or timeless priorities. So time dependent would be, I want this promotion or I want 
this amount of money or I want this house. Mm -hmm. And so that's dependent on time. But if, so, you know, it, once you get it, that if that's your only priority, once you have it, then what is your priority after that? Mm -hmm. Do you have, you have to find a whole new one and just keep redefining your deepest like wants, but the timeless priority be something like dedicating learning uh, to yourself, right? Like I always want to learn about every new experience I have. Like I really, again, like I reflect on things and whenever I meet somebody, I do want to know more about them, uh, you know, most of the time. And, you know, as long as they're not like spilling all their beans to me, you know, it's just like, hey, there's some things, you know, maybe I shouldn't know, but that's okay too because it tells me more about them. Like, I don't say shut up, but, you know, you, but sometimes people are telling sometimes you. Sometimes you got to twiddle your thumb, though. And be like, this it, is mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been in, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's uncomfortable sometimes when, you know, people are inappropriate, but, you know, maybe they never had that. Right. Or the, but, uh, yeah, timeless priority, I think, is something to dedicate yourself to, like you said. Where it doesn't have, like, an end. It has no end. So then you don't feel dissatisfied when it's, like, over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, now what? No. I really yeah. do like the idea of, of polymaths and, and renaissance men, and, you know, this kind of thing. The people who are well studied across a broad number of subjects, theology, you know, science, mathematics, literature. Um, and so these that because if you're that type of person, you will never know. Everything. everything there's always one more thing you can do mm -hmm. and it only makes you better mm -hmm. right um the timed right the time bound priorities right is i wanted to grow up and live in a middle class neighborhood and have a little nuclear family and i just wanted to be mediocre right mm -hmm. coming from where i was well by the time that i was 30 you I did had it that. yeah and then i found myself saying Oh man, what's next? Right? Mm -hmm. now what? I'm not now ready what? to retire at 30. Yeah. And I set my sights a little bit too low. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then there's this reconfiguration about, well, what do I want now? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't think I was going to get there. I right. thought I was going to be broke. And, right. And, and now that I have it and my life is hopefully less than half over, mm -hmm. what now? Right. Yeah. And, so as long as you're really willing to reconfigure those time bound priorities, because some things need to be time bound, yes. right? Like we need to have a house mm -hmm. and start yeah, saving time limit. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Pretty quick. But then what? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that you have to be able to look at your priorities and say, where's my next growth opportunity? Mm -hmm. Right. What am I doing next? Yeah. Because do I need to go back to school? Do I need to already yeah. got security? Right. What else next? That's one of the hardest things to do ever is to admit like you're not perfect. It's like you are very flawed and there are things about myself, you know, yeah. that I need to work on all the time. But as soon as I s start thinking that I'm good, like, oh, you know what? I've learned enough and I don't need to listen to anyone else's opinion ever. And I know my thought process is probably one of the best ones. That is not something that I ever want to seriously say because that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Competency, right? It, you can be very competent in something you will never be perfect at that thing mm -hmm. right and so i think that's the the key to keep right yeah 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 so heather what do you think is uh is a good good priority to have like what are your i knew <laughs> certain <laughs> we can come back that. we can come back no what's the question oh, I, I want I, I want i have a word in my mind What's a good priority to have, right? This is addressed to Heather. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to write it down on your paper. Oh yeah, here. And then. And then see. And then see if and it then matches. See, and then yes. see if I'm right, or if you would agree at least that this is a high priority. Human right? behavior. Okay. Analysis. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. Yeah. So, um, interesting. I'm doing. There's so, like a so, psychoanalytical so test is, happening no, right now. This is not psycho. So Wait. Not so what was the question? It's from what I know of you. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. Would this be one of the priorities that you, or one of the things you find important? And Tell okay. has written it down. Okay, like, but what's the question? A priority that you have, like something people should dedicate themselves to, or something people should, you know, you value. Me, yeah, don't. Right? I don't like when people, you say like people because I don't 
care people as about in person, what other people do. People as in person, person as in you. Um, okay. Yeah. That's what I meant by people. Priority for me. And Tell has written it like down. Like a thing to do or like... Something to dedicate yourself to. Something you something value. you value. Okay. Yeah. A word that comes to mind. Hmm. I would say just like quiet, like that's, peace. That's what you dedicate yourself to? Peace and quiet. That's what I like. It's like kind of safety, quiet, peacefulness. Okay. So what? So what's something that you like? like you probably to, myself. You don't have to lead it to my answer either. I'm trying to at, say the thing. Oh, that I don't wrote, know. Yeah. Yeah. So he wrote down like kindness, something that you uh, oh. prioritize. I the, yeah, I thought the idea was was the virtue, right? Oh, yeah. Of, I guess I did. I don't know. Heather always. I ask her a question, and she always says the total wrong. I feel direction. like she did. Well, I feel like she just. I always surprise herself. you. She did. Right. It yeah. was a description of what she she. Just being quiet. Why can't we all just stop talking on this <laughs> podcast and just? Those be, are just things I like yeah. for myself. Like I like my like quiet time and like calmness. Like that's when I feel the most good. Mm-hmm. But then all I mean, I still like adrenaline rushes too. But so who are you? I don't know. I don't <laughs> think that I can like really be because sometimes I like to be quiet and calm, and sometimes I like to be a little we call fun and crazy and go paragliding. Dynamic. Yeah. I don't like to be put in a box. I don't like to give one answer, well, you know, with one word. Tell thinks you're kind, and so he well, thinks that you... Well, kindness is the word, that. right? Yeah. Don't go that far. <laughs> he thinks that I prioritize that. Heather is Doesn't mean he so, thinks yeah, I'm so kind. So I thought the question was, was being posed as what Heather thought the virtue was that we should strive for, right? Like, what should we prioritize in our life, right? Oh, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. it would have helped if I asked the same question over and over again uh, each time you... You should have written your question down and read it me? off the paper. Mm-hmm. Okay. That is good. I'll, I'll use this pen and paper more uh, <laughs> and actually write on it because I never do that. Yeah, I do think... I would say that I agree with that because I think that... Why are you smiling at me like that? Because it's funny. Okay. I think... I definitely do think that kindness is important and something that everyone should strive for uh-huh. i think we need to define kindness but oh, that's another conversation are you are you bringing up kindness on purpose because of okay yeah i figured we need continuity in the podcast. as soon as he said kindness i was like oh kindness of course yeah. i don't know what you mean by kindness i don't either <laughs> you see how you just stir the pot it's yeah. wonderful yeah. i love it sorry <laughs> Watch yeah. the other episodes of podcasts. So what apparently. does, what is kindness? Yeah, like what, are we talking about like what it means to each of us oh, or what is. is it in that's a, society? That's a tough one. I think we it? all just have to, you know, just. You asked me that question the other day and then you got upset that I spiraled and we couldn't finish the podcast. Yeah, we have a. Can- but then he's like, oh, I don't know if we could define kindness. That seems really tricky. <laughs> We've started our own collection of banned <laughs> podcasts that can't air. Because I ask Heather what kindness is, and she stares at me for the next 30 minutes. I'm sorry. I thought that one was posted. It's not going to be. Okay. I'm sorry. So it's, no, everybody's clueless on this fact. Yes. I thought I was doing a running uh, joke. That's it hilarious. is. It is. It's one of those like locked in the Disney vault type of thing. Because <laughs> uh, it was. It's one of those things. And so a podcast is a little bit like therapy uh-huh. because... Mm-hmm. When somebody is just staring at you and not saying anything, like you mentioned a therapist might do. Uh-huh. Uh, Waiting for that answer. I just kept talking and talking and talking. Well, one, because I don't want... Dead air. Dead air. Right. Yeah. But that. that's one of the worst experiences I've ever had. Was <laughs> Heather, Heather just staring at me because I asked her what kindness was. And then I was like, okay, we can move, we can move on. And then I was like, something else, something else. But she was like, wait. What is kindness? And I was like, you know, we, we don't have to remember the past either. We can start right now in the present yeah. and just move on. And it wasn't <laughs> happening. So that's, uh, it, it has a point to it, right? That discussion has a point to it. And it all comes back to those original discussions that we had about rings and things, right? Or about at least sentimentality and stuff. Is, is the definition of things, right? How do you define yourself? And the question came up, how do you define kindness, mm-hmm. right? 
because it seems to be a very subjective definition that mm -hmm. varies from person to person. Mm -hmm. And I was had this thing called an operational definition beat into my head for a very long time. And so if I wanted to classify someone's behavior as aggressive, Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Because some people say, well, they said a mean thing and they were verbally aggressive. I don't care about that. Right. I care about a hit, kick, scratch, bite, punch, or other contact with me with sufficient force to cause redness or injury or swelling <laughs> which persists for more than five minutes. Yeah, that's the definition. Right. Yeah. That is an operational definition mm -hmm. and probably not the best one, but right, it's, it's off the cuff. And so what is the definition of kindness right and so then we start having these relational frames of maybe kindness is producing happiness in another person mm -hmm. right but i can make you very very happy right and spoil you to the degree that i do damage later on because right. I, I haven't done the tough stuff and so then you have maybe the the other more conservative parenting style which says, I will discipline you, right? Mm -hmm. I punish you. And it doesn't make me happy, but it's going to make you a better person later on. And that's later kindness on. to and them. And that is mm -hmm. kindness. So you can have two opposites, striking a child or spoiling a child, and both will be defined as kindness. So right. maybe kindness, right, isn't there mm -hmm. yet, right? Maybe, maybe we're talking about disparate things then. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we're talking about things that we can foist upon another person. Yeah. What is kindness? Right. Isn't it supporting someone in becoming a person? Right. Or growing as mm -hmm. a person into a person who maybe uh, brings more joy into the world. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. kindness is tough. Yeah. Sometimes kindness is loving. Sometimes kindness is fun, right? But it should all be constructive right. in, into that person, right? And so there's always an intent with kindness. Sometimes we make a faux pas, right? We don't realize somebody has some, some trauma in their past and we, whatever, right? But the intent, I think, so it's the intentioned mm -hmm. support of someone, right? Which helps them progress mm -hmm. into a more loving, joyful positive person right? i think i said that in the band episode something about motivation like it's about your intention behind what you're doing yeah oh but, uh, okay after know, staring at me for 30 minutes the I road think to hell is paved with good intentions good intentions right? yeah and so yeah so kindness is, is kind of a tricky thing right? yeah well what does it mean to have kind eyes mm. or slow hands slow hands <laughs> in that song yes. i don't know kind eyes i haven't heard this uh, you I have think very like kind dogs. Eyes. Dogs have kind, have kind eyes. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know your iris is a sphincter? Sorry, that's a random no. factoid. It is. It opens and closes like that. Sphincter. Hmm. Sphincter eyes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Similar oh, to how. Oh, you told me a fun fact the other uh -oh. day about how your eyeballs have a different immune system than the rest of your body. Rest of your body? I don't know if that's true. Well. So I don't have the credentials to be speaking of this, but most of the things... You sure did tell me I, in the kitchen like it was fat. Well, I read it on Reddit. Your eyeballs yeah. are exposed to a lot more than the rest of your body, and it is like a little, you know, like gelatinous thing in your head. So it does need... You scratch your eyeballs all the time. You rub dirt in them and everything, and so that's like why you need to have the... So you told me that without fact-checking. Well, Ouch. we can fact-check... Bust it on the podcast. Hey, Let's go ahead and post it. Ethan, this while one. you're bringing up... Uh, Changing the camera angles. Can you go ahead and look that up as well, <laughs> um, and see if see if you're correct on that? Heather's gonna do that. Okay. Does your eyeball? Do your eyeballs have their own immune system because they are exposed to different things? And I'll probably pull up the same Reddit article you got. Well, it's not on Reddit, but it is. Uh, that's a lie. I guarantee you got it off Reddit. Well, so stephanie is over we here. we do have stephanie yeah, in the background Terry over here uh furthermore the eyes have their own form of immune system called the ocular immune system yes. mm -hmm. is it on is it on wikipedia are you looking on wikipedia cvidly.com cvidly. real really real facts it looks like a, yeah it looks like a medical ethan lankford dots.com national mm -hmm. institutes of health okay. this is a dot gov that sounds official that. so what does that say um, things I didn't know. So your, your ocular sphincter 
You don't have to say sphincter. I, I, I like the is? word sphincter. Is it the the iris? The yeah, yeah. is it sphincter? You could just say iris. You could, but I'm labeling it as a thing. If I say, if I describe my eyeballs mm. by ha them having a sphincter, it doesn't make them very kind. It says that it has a uh -oh. special relationship with the immune system known as immune privilege. See, it's privilege. Oh, so it gets like all the white blood like cells. Like priority. And cells and yeah. Yeah. Privilege. Yeah, because you need to be able to see, right? That's evolutionary. It like is it. very important um, to see. And What if you went blind and then you couldn't like, have you ever thought about that? I think Your about it every time I blink. What if I was important. blind? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, my job requires me to observe behavior. Yeah. And, like, if I went blind, then... Oh, like, yeah. I use cameras. All the time. And I take photos, right. and I need to see the things I'm taking a photo of. Right. Yes, so I... You, you better hope that you got a good immune system in your eyes. <sighs> yeah. Eat yeah. more carrots. The, I keep them as Hopefully privileged... Hopefully your privilege is working. Privilege is possible. Uh, but, yeah, that is something... Like, if you... You would have to go through a whole thing if you you work with your hands. Both your hands were chopped off. How would you make rings? Oh, that's easy. I mean, you can use your feet. You can retrain. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. easy. I would use. If I lost my hands, it would be fine. Like, yeah, what's I'd, a big like, deal? I'd like <laughs> put some rubber around a chisel and just use my mouth. So right? your so eyeballs would be yeah. something to, something to organs. worry about. Yes. Uh, yeah, that would be that would be terrible. But. Maybe you'd get better at prose and describing the things you see in your mm -hmm, head, right? Mm -hmm. Close your eyes and describe them, right? Mm -hmm. There are other ways. <laughs> Eternal darkness. That's what I would say all the time. That's scary. Yeah. Um, who are you alone with no Literally. vision, darkness? Yeah. With your, yeah, see, that's my father works with people who live with visual impairments, and I have worked extensively. Uh, at camps, Heather, you and I both have worked mm -hmm. with people who live with visual impairments, and they have the best sense of humor mm -hmm. about themselves. Which is, like, I think about it now, but then I'm like, I've met and known people who have went through vision loss. Mm -hmm. Like people, there's people who always, you know, been born uh, with blindness, congenital. Yes, mm -hmm. and then there's people who have it later on, and yeah. It's a rough go, but if they can make it work, I would hope I could too. Just like Ted would be using you a, you just have to make it work. You just use, figure it out. Using a pencil to make rings. Be have like having a mouth guard in there with yeah attached to a chisel. Yeah, it'd work. There's people who drive with no legs. There are. Yeah. Yeah. But that is something to think about. So, um. I have other stuff written down in Abby spoke design. Okay. And was that the ring shirt's main priority right now? Basically, Pens. whatever. Pens. I don't really care what... Like, you can follow us on the Facebook page, and you're going to see a whole lot of shirts that come through with mm -hmm. Stephanie, right? You come see us at the trade show, you'll probably see some more of the hardware that we got going on like that. Um, and so, honestly... it. I hit a place where I'm having to reformulate on the marketing because mm -hmm. that, that idea of what do you want seems like a very simple question oh, and man. people don't know. It's not yeah. And so how do you make 15 product variants right. for a thousand different products that haven't been created yet? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I'm not making 15 different types. Right. right. And so you're like them. other stuff. Yes. And like, so, but, yeah, so the shirt's cool. Like, we can run some of those. Our, our own designs, yeah, we have those on the site. But really, it's going through Facebook and sending us a message, right? Mm -hmm. And saying, hey, we heard you're making rings. Can you do Can you do something like this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah. opening the conversation. It's mostly right? about the the story, right? How long, how long did you say you've been operating in operation with this sort of... What have you been doing? Stephanie's off camera over here. Mm-hmm. Two well, years it's longer than that, because you started making the vinyl ones. It wow. wasn't for sale, mm -hmm. but it's probably been six or seven. Cause we're in a rent house, yeah. So probably yeah. about that long. Yeah, that we've been doing that, and I've been doing pins and turning well, said stuff for making things. Twenty since you were fourteen, five years, twenty four years, right? Something like that, yeah. So you do have experience in this, but it's just the 
the idea, the story behind it. How do you, mm-hmm. how do you well, sell I that? I think yeah. that, yeah, some of the story is that it grew out of giving gifts, right? Or getting yeah. gifts and then wanting to be able to mm-hmm. make those type of, type of gifts. And then once you're able to do that and other people say, hey, can you do this? Yeah, I can, right? Like we can, we can work on that. And eventually you have to make a business out of this hobby, right? Mm-hmm. Because I can't keep sustaining a hobby without some income to the business. But it's a side yeah. hustle. We make a few bucks off of it, but not, you know, yeah. I would never be able to replace even half of my income. Mm-hmm. Right. This. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's just a, such a unique, interesting idea. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think it deserves more well, attention. Well, like for, yeah. like, custom stuff, so it's like T-shirts, rings, but also if I was like, can you make me, I'm trying to think of something more interesting than like a mug like like a like a lamp mm-hmm. you could do that i could turn your lampshade out of wood right yeah. really thin yeah like where it, it hangs down yes it really is like in a way limitless like mm-hmm. those are the things that we've been and, talking uh, about but and say yeah i want a geometric pattern right and mm-hmm. so you can you can take wood and put the pattern down and pour resin in it and whenever you turn it down thin mm-hmm. you have like this geometric square pattern with like blue resin in between right yeah yeah and so all i need to know is like what size of lamp is it going on right and we can Mm -hmm. do that yeah Mm. you want a lamp i was just trying to think of something different than like because you know p like etsy shops and stuff Mm -hmm. like have do y'all have an etsy it's really hard to put all the products on. I know, because I've, we I've have tried, tried to do that too, and it's just so, we it through, is very time yeah, consuming. Yeah, we went through like four different websites trying to find out, because yep. there are so many variants yes. of the products, right? Just oh, for shirts alone, right. you yes. have that print, the but then you have 15 colors. And you have to input each. Oh, no. And then you have right. seven different sizes, Yep. right? And then you have the customization field. So most yep. places don't have two separate variant classes Mm -hmm. that have right because if you have the color black for your shirt and you have the smiley face on it or whatever and then you have six sizes that's just for one color yep and you're doing that 15 times and so all of a sudden you have almost 100 variants per product and you're offering 400 products or something like that yes that is incredible Yep. And so I haven't figured out the solution for that. And I'm I'm not going to pay somebody to solve that for exactly. me if I'm not bringing in enough money from it, right? And so then it becomes this weight of let's build a relationship and you talk to me for about five minutes. Yeah. And let's see if we can't hash that out. Let's get a consultation. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you ever do figure out Etsy, let me know because same, like, yeah. it, I was so overwhelmed. I think you have it. to, like, run an API to another yes. website, right? That, yep. We, yep. we did try that. And I tried to sync it up with like ours, but there's, there is an integration where you can sync your Etsy store to our like Squarespace, mm-hmm. do, like what we use um, to host the website. And then, but there's nothing that goes from Squarespace to Etsy. Right. So, so then I'm like, I already set up the store here, so I'm not going to do that again. Yeah, we found one that'll handle all the variations, but then it's like uploading the product variant photos yeah because you need one for each one whenever you click on pink this is what it looks like on pink yeah and my good you know that's a full-time job exactly there's a reason that people get paid for building these websites right exactly and three o'clock in the morning can only come yep so many times before you're tired um so that's one of the issues but that's also one of the things right like i don't want somebody just to get something that's close to Mm -hmm. what they want right oh good enough no tell me what you what you want really think it through you're spending your money on a product you're wanting something that means something to somebody let's get this nothing is perfect but as close Mm -hmm. to perfect as we can yeah right could you in five minutes really make something custom for how would you go about that process of of like a they'd have to have thought about it before right yeah um but ain't doing that i'm not doing that (laughs) so really what it is is people ask questions right and that's whenever you lose the first one they're like hey can you do this kind of ring and it's uh, so can you make a ring out of, of stone and wood or can you make a, a wooden ring with stone on the outside? Yes, I can. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about your materials. Right. Yeah. 
what type of stone are you looking for? Are you looking for some kind of like true stone with the resin that's a little bit stronger? Are you looking for something that has natural cracks? Are you looking for a stone from your grandpa's farm that mm -hmm. might explode on the lathe whenever I turn it up real fast, right? What are we looking at here? What type of wood are we looking at? Are we looking at balsa wood, maple, birch, right? They all have different, uh, like oak. Oak has a problem that whenever you turn it and, and down is that it has these pits in it that can pick up material and so it starts looking a little mm. bit aged and weathered, yeah. right? Even though it's new. So do you want that? Because that's going to take a different treatment process mm -hmm. where I have to fill in those gaps. And so it's, it's helping people understand the manufacturing process. If they say, I don't care, I just want oak and some kind of blue stone, right? Mm -hmm. Because, or a whiskey barrel oak, right? Jack Daniels. And then I want titanium on the outside. Mm -hmm. I can do that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like that's we're done. Um, so tell me what size, if you don't know what size, I'll send you a little ring sizer. We'll figure it out. And then right. Get all that perfect. Cause you can't resize titanium. And yeah. You can grind out wood a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can, you can do that real fast. Right. Um, if someone says, so it happened whenever I had the person come over and say, my wife likes peacocks, mm -hmm. right? Oh, she wants a peacock ring. Okay, cool. Um, these are some options. We have resin, you know, I can get some, some stone colored. We can do a triple band, right? With different colors in there. If you want that, you can do the resin. And so you can show examples of that real fast and like, Oh yeah, I really like that resin, right? With, with some wooden, some earthy tones in there and then boom. Yeah, we got it. You want a pin to go with that, right? If they're a teacher or something like that, mm -hmm. you can match, right? You have this matching kind of stuff. So that's how it would go. And it can happen really fast. Or it can be, I don't know, I need to think on that. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me know. These are kind of the parameters I have. Once again, I don't have the stuff to make an entirely gold ring and set stones in it, right? Mm -hmm. That's a fine jeweler. That's yeah. And that's yeah. going to be way expensive. Okay. That, that helps too i think defining like if you want like a fancy like wedding ring it's not really that sort of like fine yeah. jeweler you said yeah. setting setting stones yeah and i want it entirely metal and i want these ornate little filigrees off the side right well you're gonna have to go find a jeweler a fine jeweler yeah because yeah, they have flat. the materials for it well it's yeah. a different yeah it's metal casting and stuff okay like that so mine would be working with non-traditional materials mm. right. on that. Right. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Like you yeah. can get like rose gold or mm -hmm. you can get a gold plated tungsten or, you know, so you can get the same colors. Yeah. It's just not going to be a solid gold ring with the fine stuff on it. Right. This would be non-traditional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And if I can't do it, I'll pass you on to somebody else who might be able to. Right. Yeah. Because oh. at the end of the day you want what you want and yeah. I don't want to give you something or sell you something that mm -hmm. isn't what you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard to know what you want, but yeah. Um, so any other questions? big I, guy? I think I don't know. I mean, I, I know I touched the areas of like the AI parts and that's what I've been like exploring and stuff. And that's what, what interests me a lot is the when you told me first like AI generated images mm -hmm. that's really what I like I think that's I don't know I'm sure other people do it but it's just like one image that they it's not a custom thing it's not your dog on mm -hmm. a t-shirt so that's the sort of uniqueness that you offer is it is AI generated which people think that's taking away the artistry of it but it's not. I think it's setting a, a an outline, right? Yeah. And and that's what I really like about the shirts and the rings. Of course, I'm wearing one. I really like the rings. But also, it's cool. I didn't know that you had such a vast array mm -hmm. of different materials, non-traditional yeah. materials that and you could really that's make what them I, from. I like is the idea of give me a challenge. Let me figure mm -hmm. out how to do it. Right. I'm still figuring out how to set stone. I, I know what tools I would need to set stone into some of these rings. Right. But I need like a laser welder and some other stuff that's really expensive. So I can't do that, but I understand how, right. Whenever you're thinking of how to engineer these things. And so if somebody says, oh, I want my grandma's old quilt, some fabric, but I want it on stone, you know, yeah. from some granite that was there. 
holy smokes, yeah, I'm going to need some stuff to play with because I'm probably going to botch a few of these, right? Mm -hmm. But I'll get it for you. Mm. Um, I'm pretty sure I can do that. So you're, you're asking for a challenge sometimes too. Right? Absolutely. Well, that's mm -hmm. part of the, the game, time. isn't All it? The time. Yeah. If we're not challenged, we get stagnant and bored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's cool. But if I can rise to that challenge, then somebody else can rise to the challenge of figuring out what they want. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Lay down, yeah. right? That's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So just come at... Come at me with a prompt, bro. Come at these mm -hmm. guys. He, yeah. Tell is not a robot, but he is a very intelligent person. And he can create all sorts of cool things. I try. And if you so, just want, like, some decently priced shirts that, like, are trendy... Mm-hmm. Hit us up on the Facebook, right? At Abby Spoke Designs. I'm looking over here at my wife because I actually don't know my own business. Very Producer. Well. Yeah. Um, and and we have just some standard stuff, right? So we have some just licensed prints that we do. Mm -hmm. um, or let us know and say that's not cutting it, bro. Like, what else you got? Right? Can you get me? Can you get me something like this? And we'll we'll talk about doing something like that. So the call to action would be go check out Abby Spoke Design because it is probably the coolest thing that i have i it made me a two ring guy that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> uh so go we change the behavior there yes, yes. yes. and if you want to be a better person if you want to look cooler if you want to have an interesting story behind something that you're wearing i would go to abby spoke design on facebook and then they'll take care of you from there and just say hi we're not just we're not weird I, well maybe we're our weird people but we like to talk right right and I don't think Just say hello. Yeah. And he'll make you something non traditional and unique. So also Abby spoke is A B I. A B I. And then spoke. spoke. Hopefully you can spell that. Yeah. S P O K E. That's right. Just Design. D E S I G N. S. S. Abby spoke design. There right. we go. I've Plural. I've been confirmed. My wife says yes. We're getting the nods over there, so I think we should wrap this up, but uh Thanks so much for being on. Thanks for having us on. It's been great. And yeah. Let's go hang out. Let's Turn go. it off and let's go. Let's go hang out. <laughs> I want to go get some food. Okay. See ya. Bye. So long. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> was that a good one? Uh, that was good. His brain is just like on superpower mode the whole Did time. Did you see he's how like, I stayed pretty much on topic? <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. Yeah.